Hi folks, in this tutorial I would like to share my Beard Classifier Fine Tuning Pipeline. It's uh, written in PyTorch but reuses powerful libraries, hacking face transformers and catalysts to control experiments. Um, this, the path to this GitHub repo is shared in, in the video description below and um, I created it in, uh, with an idea that it's easily reusable and that you can basically pass your data to the pipeline and then just run it. Uh, let's look at the structure. Uh, in SRC we've got the code uh, and it's mainly it's uh, about data, about the model and then the training part. And so therefore there will be four parts in this tutorial. We'll start with an introductory part and then the one covering all about data preparation uh, then everything about uh, the PyTorch model uh, that we pass and then finally the training part. Uh, so let's briefly take a look at the readme. So yeah, uh, that is that readme is very informative and I'll actually recommend it for, to, I recommend to have a readme for every uh, repo that you create. And um, this repo says that uh, you can specify some parameters in a config uh, YAML file and then optionally you can customize your code for data processing and you can probably change your model in uh, src model.py and then just run python src train.py. So it's a pretty simple instruction and let's take a look at the config file and I also recommend having config file for all of your projects so instead of just you know editing source file, changing some configs. It's much cleaner to have a simple config file. Uh, and so the idea is that basically you can just customize these paths. Uh, so path to your data, uh, then training file name, validation file name, probably a test file name. And then, uh, so in my case, yeah, there's just some, some names. I actually take them from, a, uh, from my current project, only that I'm sharing only toy files. Uh, but the idea is that you just uh, specify your CSV files and then provide one text field name. So it's a text that you, you'd like to classify and then the label field, field name. So for example, if you'd like to, to classify toxic commands, uh, probably this is your command uh, text and then the label might be either whether a text is either toxic or not. And then you also specify a path to your predictions. And then if you just customize that and uh, go back uh, to this code and run python src slash train.py, uh, then it would train, so it fine tune your bird model uh, to this data. So the idea is that it's as simple as that and probably you, you would like the structure of this code and you, probably you'll find this uh, easy to use. It's built on top of uh, more uh, notebooks, so tutorials uh, given as Kaggle notebooks, so on multi-class classification, so classifying Amazon product reviews into categories, and then also multi-label classification, so exactly identifying toxic commands. Uh, but this uh, one is much cleaner, so instead of having everything in a notebook, you'll have a, a, a nice uh, repo, uh, and uh, here you can also train your models, not in a notebook, but I'll show how to use GPUs and basically use these as a library. Uh, right, so in, in this first introductory part, uh, we'll cover a bit uh, uh, this uh, preliminary tutorial, uh, firing a cannon and spares, Beard versus logistical regression. So I recommend this video. Uh, and I'll give us a brief overview of this one and because the pipeline is also mentioned there. Uh, and then we'll go to the second part to yeah, everything about data preparation. Uh, so just given a very brief overview of, uh, of the previous talk, uh, so which is, yeah, I recommend watching it. So it serves as a prerequisite to, to this tutorial. Uh, so yeah, I'm not even showing it uh, on a large screen, uh, just briefly going through it. Uh, so it's good to be familiar with uh, transformers and Beard. So uh, in the beginning, I give an overview of what what, what's BIRD and what are transformers, uh, what's the, the whole idea of BIRD, uh, how it's different from LSTMs, let's say, uh, what processing it, it, it needs. 
And now I'm really just gliding through all the slides uh, because the idea is just to, you know, give a small overview of the previous discussion uh, so that you can catch up and uh, probably study some, some more materials. So, yeah, everything about BIRT, text processing, the subtasks that it was trained with, uh, and then, uh, most importantly, applications. So sequence classification, sentence pair classification, which generalizes, generalizes well to question answering. And then I also mentioned uh, a nice competition that I took part in, so Google uh, NQ, Nature of Questions, it's question answering. Um, then sequence tagging, including named entity recognition uh, and part of speech tagging. So we discuss how uh, BIRT as an encoder serves as uh, text representation techniques which can be further used with different applications. And if you need to catch up with BERT, I really recommend videos by Chris McCormick. Uh, so he actually reuses uh, some more um, tutorials mentioned further by Jay Alamar. So Jay Alamar creates very cool visualizations and uh, he really explains things well in a visually comprehensive way. And uh, Chris McCormick uses them and extends them, writes some code, uh, to provide more explanations. So, uh, yeah, before proceeding with uh, BIRT fine tuning, I really recommend to understand the concepts, to understand the architecture of transformers and BIRT, and then it will be really much more rewarding to go on understanding, let's say, source code of Hagen Face and really understanding what you are actually doing, fine tuning all these billions of, okay, millions of uh, parameters. Uh, right, so, uh, so then uh, Catalyst. Uh, Catalyst is a framework which helps you, uh, first of all, reuse some nice practices of, uh, on running uh, deep learning experiments. Uh, and then it also helps you reuse some cool features uh, implemented in PyTorch, so state-of-the-art models and optimizers. So we cover it in more detail uh, in the fourth part of this tutorial. Uh, but basically this library uh, helps to meet the needs of researchers uh, and, and practitioners. So with uh, adding just simple flags, you can turn on things like distributed training on mixed precision training, and it helps you with configuration of your experiments, uh, reproducibility, and uh, yeah, you can visualize your training logs very, very simply. Um, so we use this library to control experiments uh, and some popular uh, analogs are lightning um, and well you can just basically use PyTorch but Catalyst helps you replace with this large training loop which can take some 200 lines of code so it, it simply replaces it with uh, with a command like you know like in, in sklearn.fit.predict so here you'll have something like dot train and it will train your model Right, so to give a brief overview of, uh, of the pipeline, so it consists of uh, five parts. So it's everything about reading and processing data. So here goes all pandas. Uh, then we'll have uh, uh, the PyTorch part, so preparing data sets and data loaders. So we cover these two topics in, uh, in the first video. Uh, so, sorry, in the second part of this tutorial. So the first one is introductory. Uh, so it's um, yeah, just you know, reading data with, with pandas and then processing and creating uh, PyTorch datasets and data loaders. Um, so that's all about, that's all uh, covered in, in the second part. So the third part addresses the modeling. So how we provide a PyTorch model. So uh, here we dig uh, deeper into, into the source code of Hugging Face. And so we would really like to understand what's happening there. And uh, we pick the most, probably the most popular implementation by Hagen Face. And we, well, we don't discuss the BERT architecture here. So it's, um, it goes as a prerequisite, but we would really understand what we are doing there with uh, Hagen Face implementation. At least what's the input, what's the output and things like that. And then in the final part, we, we cover Catalyst and how we run training and inference. So predictions with Catalyst. Uh, but basically, you just provide the ingredients that you prepared, so the model, the criterion, optimizer, all the data that you cooked previously, uh, and then it would 
do the training for you and write all the checkpoints, all the logs, uh, that, and you can visually track your experiments. Uh, so that's the plan for the next three parts. Uh, I will just briefly cover some insights uh, from, from the end of this, this talk, uh, the previous one. Uh, so there we cover some uh, applications and we compare BIRT to logistic regression. So that's pretty important. Yeah, before you fine tune some models, it's uh, good to have an idea how it stands against other simple methods like TF-ADF and logistic regression. Uh, so yeah, not uh, drilling down into the application itself. I just wanted to show how uh, BIRT compared to logistic regression in one of the tasks that I covered. Uh, so yeah, here in this, in this plot, uh, I wanted to compare BIRT, which is in green versus logistic regression. So it's TF-ADF, so uh, term frequency, inverse document frequency as text processing. And then logistic regression, it's uh, yeah golden rule in, L in NLP, just first for classification to try to use uh, this simple model. And so here on X axis I had data set size and on the Y axis I had uh, F1 scores. And I only have two pairs of F1 scores because I had um, two level of classes. So I had some high level classes uh, and then each one of them was further subdivided into categories. Uh, so let's just focus on the uh, upper pair of curves. Uh, so eventually I found out that uh, uh, actually logistic regression uh, is catching up with BERT in terms of uh, accuracy or F1 score. So here we show yeah, that yeah, eventually they converge to something like 80% F1 score. And um, yeah, that was pretty annoying that uh, a simple model uh, can actually be as good as, as, as BERT. Uh, but what, what I found with uh, all the pre-training language model and then uh, fine-tuning the language model, fine-tuning the classifier, I found out that, well, with BERT, we can actually achieve uh, decent scores much faster. So here it needed only 500 examples uh, to achieve yeah, something like 75% of one score, while logistic regression needed five times more data. And so, uh, you need to be really careful uh, when switching from simple models to, to transformers and uh, yeah, in this case to BERT. Um, so you, f of course you need to start with uh, some simple baselines. Um, but uh, in this case, if uh, labeling is very expensive and in my case, it, that was the, uh, the case indeed. So labeling was very expensive and if you can sa save time labeling then it's worth it. Then it's, uh, if you have a lot of unlabeled data, you can apply uh, transfer learning. Yeah, so you can fine tune your language model, then fine tune BERT classifier. And then you see that uh, indeed you can achieve uh, good scores much faster. Uh, so the conclusions of all that previous discussion were that, yeah, for some simple problems, uh, well, tf -ADF and logistic regression is typically good enough. So maybe in just if you have just multi-class classification and uh, the idea of bag of words, if it already provides uh, a nice baseline, probably yeah, switching to BERT will, will would all only increase it by you know two or three percent. Maybe it's not worth it. Well, if you have some hard problems like yeah maybe named entity recognition or question answering, maybe you you just don't know how to approach it with a bag of words and TFIDF. Uh, there it may, makes sense to apply BERT. Uh, though, yeah, of course, deploying transformer in production is much harder than some, some simple model as just logistic regression and interpretability is also an issue. So it's only being researched for transformers while it's more or less straightforward with simpler models. So yeah, transformers are not, uh, not easy to work with, uh, but in some cases it's, it's really worth it. And so we, we proceed with, um, uh, with drilling, yeah, going deeper into this uh, fine-tuning pipeline. And so the second part uh, addresses everything about data preparation. So stay tuned.